Hello, this is part three of the Unity Game Lift series. In this video, I'm gonna build off of what we started in part two and finish the Game Lift integration into our Unity project. So if you haven't seen that, it'd be a good idea to go ahead and watch that one first. By the end, I'll demonstrate the ability to run multiple game clients that can communicate with Amazon's Game Lift servers to send and receive gameplay messages. We're going to start on step three on the Mega Frog Race as we covered the other two in the previous videos. It wants us to download the AWS mobile SDK for Unity, but this didn't seem to work or is outdated. So I found another download leak with a bunch of AWS .NET SDK drivers, and that seemed to work really well. So we're gonna use that instead. You can check the description for the download link. Once downloaded, copy over the drivers shown here into the project's plugin folder. Here we're going to reference the Mega Frog Races real-time server client code and our goal is to create or join a game lift session through Lambda, authenticate it with Cognito, and then finally establish the session locally with our game. Check out the link to the tutorial code in the description. In your project, create a script game session to house the code to communicate with the game lift server. Let's go over to the tutorials code that we need to reference. The method we're looking at is connect to game lift server. It creates a Cognito AWS credentials object this is where we'll use the credentials that we got from part two and makes a call to the Lambda function. Then it uses the response to establish a continuous connection with Gamelet. I'm going to pull out the minimum relevant code to accomplish these goals. I'll provide a link to the relatively complete code in the description. Let's grab the player session object class as this will represent the player session response we get back from Lambda. Next, copy over the request code. then grab the Cognito credentials and Lambda client setup. We'll have to make a few modifications to clean up the function and make it work for our class. Let's review the finished game session class. I injected the real-time client into the constructor. As a side note here, I ended up using Zenject to make it easier for me to piece this stuff together, but you don't have to use it. Then I added a call to setup match to establish the session with game lift when the class is initialized. Now let's take a look at setup match. The Cognito AWS credentials is what we created back in part two. Make sure to update the identity pool in region. Next, we initialize the Lambda client. Make sure to update the invoke requests function name to your Lambda name. Then make a call to create or join a game lift session through the Lambda client and process the response. If we got back all the info we need, make a call to join match. So join match makes the actual call to the real-time client code to establish our game lift connection. The first thing we do here is get an available UDP port for our local computer to establish a connection on. I created this get available port method based on a combination of .NET documentation and Stack Overflow posts. Links in the description. Then we call the real-time clients init method with all the required parameters. The return player session object from the Lambda call provided the DNS, port, and session ID that we used to connect with. Let's take a look at the real-time client class. It's the same as the Amazon example except I changed the constructor method to an init function and now the constructor just handles the dependency injection setup. Otherwise it's the same logic to establish the game lift connection. Okay, so we've reviewed the logic that joins a session and establishes a connection for continuous communication with game lift. The only other change here was to duplicate the send message method with an added opcode field so we can easily communicate statuses with the server. Back in the game lift session class, I created a player action method that can be used to send messages to the server when anything important happens. So let me show you where I'm using it. So for my project, I have this controller class that handles some player actions like throwing a ball. I'm going to add a call to the game session's player action function right after a ball is thrown, and also when the block is hit. Hitting the block is kind of the goal of this demo game. Whoever hits it first, wins. So that means we are telling our game with server script, the real-time client script, that something has happened based on an opcode. When we send the block hit message to the real-time client script, we want it to determine the winner and then message each player in the session with the game over status who won and who lost. So let's see how to set that up. In part two, we added the real-time server script example without making any changes to our game with fleet. Most of the changes will be made in the onMessage function. Let's add a case for receiving a throw message and then one for box hit. 
So the throw case is just for demo purposes when a player makes a throw. It just propagates the message to all attached player sessions. When the server receives a message for block hit, it checks if the player that sent the message is the winner. If so, we send them a U1 message and then the other players receive a U lost message. The other change was to cache the players as they join the session. I had to do this because the session.getPlayers method returned an empty list for me, so I had to manually cache the players who joined the session. Not really sure what's going on there, but I'll save the debugging for another day. You can view all the gameless server APIs in the Amazon docs. Links in the description. Back in our real-time client scripts in Unity, we'll add the case to disconnect the game server when a game over message is received from the gameless server. So let's demo the gameplay to see it in action. I built the game for Windows and ran it on my PC, and then I ran another instance directly from Unity on my Mac. As you can see, the throwing action will propagate a message to other players in the session. When I hit the block, it sends a hit block message to the game lift server, which figures out that that means the game is over and instantly relays the winner and loser opcodes to the respective clients. In this game, the PC instance won and the Mac instance lost. You can see in the logs where the you lost message came in along with the game over opcode. Let's do a sanity check in the game lift console. Take a look at the latest session at the top and drill down on the ID. And there you can see two completed sessions of gameplay. So there you have it. We've been able to set up GameLift in Amazon, integrate its SDKs into our project, and demonstrate the game clients created or joined a session, and successfully communicated messages back and forth with the server. We now have a foundation to build upon to create our multiplayer game. Thanks for watching.